Okay. Where are we headed next? Back. Any more? Yeah. 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 When all the tests have been completed, the rangers begin carefully untying the dragon. This has the potential to be as dangerous as the capture. The rangers are not sure what the dragon will do once it is released. It could decide to turn around and attack its captors. The release has to be timed so that all the rangers let go at the same time. He just had a nice little physical. He's healthy. <laughs> the dragon saunters away slowly, indignant but unharmed. One big dragon. Terry and the team rejoice at the completion of their first successful capture. The other way by the dragons. Well, you had a hold of one. It's kind of like having a hold of a dragon's tail. The small one has wandered back into the area and the rangers decide to try to capture it again. It is believed that the little ones possess less poison than their elders, but they can still be just as deadly. Once again, this one really puts up a fight. the dragon with lightning speed manages to nip one of the rangers on the thumb. This is when it's good to have a medical doctor on hand. When he was originally bitten, we were concerned that maybe it had been a deep bite that could have drawn blood, which could potentially injected whatever the dragon has in their mouth, whether it's a toxin, a bacteria, an endotoxin, or a virus that can cause him to become sick. We were concerned that he might have gotten exposed to whatever it is that the dragon carries. Fortunately, however, this uh, ranger only had a superficial wound. It didn't actually even break the skin very much. We uh, took care of him by um, cleaning it, um, put an antibiotic ointment on it, and then covered it up so to prevent further contamination, further exposure for whatever the dragon might carry. And then we were going to follow him to see what would happen and pr potentially put him on some other medication if he should develop a problem. But he was extremely lucky. Lucky may be an understatement. The dragon's mouth has 32 razor-sharp teeth, which are serrated along the back edge and capable of slicing through buffalo hide. Because of the remoteness of these islands, even with a doctor on hand, a serious bite from a dragon or a snake is potentially fatal. Lori was on the other side of the world from her life flight helicopters and trauma facility. The rangers stand guard because the commotion of a capture has once again brought other dragons into the area. After testing the dragon, the rangers prepare for the release. Tensions are high. This one has already proven itself to be aggressive, and the small ones move much quicker. Fortunately, he just wants to get away. It hasn't rained in more than a month. The park rangers have built this watering hole for the Komodo dragons so they don't overheat or die of thirst. These dragons are cooling off in the only fresh water left on this desiccated island. Just about 30 feet away, three deer approach in search of water. The deer know the dragons are there, and the dragons know the deer are thirsty. And so, the waiting game begins. The famished dragons patiently lie in and around the water hole, silently waiting to see how close the deer will get. The barge deer cautiously circle the hole. They can smell the water. Slowly, they begin to gather their courage 
as they edge closer and closer to the water, wanting desperately to get a drink. In anticipation, the dragons have begun to salivate. Then, for the first time in three months, Mother Nature has decided in favor of the deer. The deer quickly drink from the newly formed puddles and run off. The Komodo dragons will have to wait to eat another day. The next dragon is a big one and is easily noosed, but at more than 250 pounds, the dragon is so strong it drags the ranger across the field. The dragon wedges itself against a tree, so the rangers decide to restrain it and move it to a safer and more open area. In order to reduce the risk of another bite, the rangers use duct tape on the dragon's mouth. Lori cleans and preps the tail so Don can collect the blood sample. All the while, a large dragon is sitting about 30 feet away watching the group closely. Collecting blood from a dragon is not easy. You're going into the middle of a big, very large tail, so it's not like hitting a vessel right under, the, under soft human skin. You're going through uh, bony plated skin, you're going through very tough muscle, you're having to, to blindly feel where the, the tail vertebrae are and go to the very center of that. Putra collects saliva from the dragon's mouth on cotton swabs. These swabs will be used to build bacteria cultures on petri dishes back in the lab. The dragons are numbered before they are released, so they won't be caught twice. We were here, and then we just we will follow this 2.5 kilometers trail up to the former uh, uh, feeding uh, uh, feeding station or something, which is not uh, happen now, but. We can. We will go to this place, and we will follow the other trail on the way back home. Yeah, ready? On the way, be quiet and not smoking. And now we go. Since so many Komodo dragons were around the ranger station, the crew decided to travel deeper into the island, hoping to reduce the problem of other dragons approaching during the captures. The group has good reason to be cautious. This marker is placed in memory of Baron Rudolf and Redding Bibereg. The Baron has the distinction of being the first recorded Westerner to be eaten by a Komodo dragon. The Baron was tired and sat down to rest, telling the rest of his group to go on without him and pick him up on the way back. When the group returned, the Baron was nowhere to be found. An exhaustive search turned up only his hat, his camera, and a bloody shoe. Komodo dragons aren't the only danger visitors to this island face. Komodo has one of the highest populations of venomous snakes in the world. When walking through the, the backwoods on Komodo, you're almost never going to see a snake unless you're really looking. That's the problem, is when you don't see a snake. 
If you accidentally step on one or put your hand on a branch where a tree viper is, that's how you get bit. Johnny was growing increasingly concerned for the safety of the crew. Uh, we were a little bit taken aback and surprised by the fact that the other dragons were hungry and were rushing in every time that we captured a dragon. They were rushing in to share a, a meal. They thought that it was a kill rather than what we were doing. And, they, and, and dragons do share meals uh, forcibly. Uh, I didn't know if they wanted to eat the, the dragon or me. I wasn't quite sure. The rangers walk right up to the next dragon and place the noose around his neck. He seems more annoyed than anything else. Until the rangers surround him, then he begins to fight. Hey, watch out, guys. Once again, the commotion immediately causes other dragons to charge the group. One of the reasons we saw dragons tending to congregate around every capture we made was the simple fact that Komodo Island is a very dry island eight months out of the year. Uh, we arrived at the end of the dry season. At that point, all the prey species for small dragons, medium and large, are just non-existent. So once we restrained one of these animals, a group of people, a lot of noise, the other Komodo dragons in the area would uh, expect a, a prey had been caught and that they were going on to their next meal. And since meals may be hard to come by this time of the year, uh, they were just driven by hunger. Uh, they weren't really driven by aggression. It was just they're hungry. While some of the rangers fight off the hungry dragons, others work to get the captive dragon ready for testing. This spreads the manpower dangerously thin. Don uses a pulse oximeter to try and measure the heart rate and the oxygen content of the dragon's tissue. This device depends on being able to transmit light through the skin to a sensor on the back of the clamp. Unfortunately, the skin on the dragon is too thick to be translucent. Four dragons had now been safely caught, tested and released, but Johnny feels the team is pressing their luck. Unbelievable, you know, you, you're messing with one dragon, the other one's trying to eat you. Well, there's a higher risk doing it right now by yeah. watching your back. Um, you know, it's not one on one. Well, but you got to think of the risk of the dragon, and that's. Uh, well, I, the I, dragons I, are important. Well, I agree. Uh, I think but, I know. think we have kept them off twice, and I, I just think. You're busy and intense on the on the medical procedures, but these these guys are hungry and they want to come and eat something, and you know, it's not. Fun. Yeah, and you're probably yeah, the one they like to eat. They look for lunch. That's right. I don't Johnny, want to be lunch. Never, Johnny, I can have After reviewing all three. the options, well, the team decides to try to bring the dragons into the fenced-in viewing area. It was built to protect tourists who traveled to Komodo to see the dragons. I told you to bring some more rangers. The next dragon is quick and really wants out of there fast. As with all the other captures, other dragons immediately begin to move in on the group. This time as planned, the rangers who capture the dragon secure it and carry it off to the fenced-in area. The other rangers once again had to fight off the extra dragons, but only until the crew is safe inside the fence. Once inside the fence, the crew can safely do the testing without having to constantly watch their backs. Exact measurements are taken and recorded of the captured dragons. This dragon has been salivating, and combined with the constantly bleeding gums, it provides a lot of blood and saliva. Yeah. 
Once the testing is complete, the rangers quickly release it. The dragon seems pretty nonchalant as he slowly walks away. This plan had worked well because this dragon was small enough to carry. The next one the rangers want to capture is too big to carry. They decide to use a dead fish as bait to lead the dragon into the fenced-in area. The danger with this plan is, now the team is in a confined area with a hungry dragon which is not restrained. Conveniently, even after the dragon is noosed, his only concern is trying to get to the bait. Just outside the fence sit two other hungry dragons, drawn by all the commotion and the stench of the bait. Any more? Okay, let's bring... Don hit the vein solid on this dragon, and it is providing a lot of blood. Putra and Lori place the samples in vacuum tubes, which are quickly frozen in liquid nitrogen. The rangers release the dragon, and it quickly walks away. The next day, when the crew arrives, they find two hungry dragons closing in on a deer who was dying from a previous bite. The bite has taken its toll on the unlucky victim. The deer has gone blind and is barely able to stand. The dragons can smell the festering wound and are already salivating in anticipation of their next meal. They know death is not far away and begin to circle the suffering deer. are starving and their patience is running thin. 